because people took advantage. But the Svetlana Maharaj has the same problem. When he started to preach practically from nothing, there was a bunch of enthusiastic brahmacharis and sannyasis. As soon as the big temples came up, then the struggle started. Who will live in which room? Who is in charge for what? You know, and immediately the fighting started. So Bhagavad Maharaj was very, very disgusted with this. So, you know, so, uh, this is actually lessons we can be, be, be learn on the road. I know that I'm talking about of theory here, but actually that's where the real challenge is. Not to study more shloka, and not to be more knowledgeable. About what? This whole book is about to teach us how to surrender more. And that's good. When we study in this way, we can have hundreds of thousands of shlokas, but it has to take some result, just to take some effect. And the effect is very practically visible. You know, that the world is more ready to mold their lives along the needs. What is to be done? You know, they become more, and more loyal to the cause, putting their personal agenda aside. So you can see how Prabhupada's research tries to uh, you know, I don't think he was hundred percent successful. According to that letter, you know, that particular government might have a very strong agenda on his own. And uh, that was in Prabhupada's presence. Now you can imagine what happens in Prabhupada's absence. And there is nothing anymore to stop this. Then so many ideas come out. Now we have to proceed with Krishna consciousness like that, and we have to do this, and we have to do that. And so many foul ideas with foul names, the whole vocabulary is changed, you know. All these changes which I saw in 40 years, you can imagine. So, so far I'm concerned and I'm not alone. There's devotees who are always trying to bend it back to the original purpose. What makes you really happy in Krishna consciousness? Well, happy means that you just surrender to the cause with whatever you have. And Krishna sees, of course, for Grihastha is a completely different field, you know, how to surrender. For a Brahmacharya, it's a very easy position. But still, the cause should be the same. Should be the same. And that's actually the real happiness you can experience in life. There's some uh, questions here, this is what I said so far. So, those who, those who came, left, and came back again, what happened to them? Where they Depends. Know? It's very personal. They also sometimes leave again. They're leaving again, some, it's coming, going. Some stay. According to the material desires. Hmm. Unexhausted material desires. So you have to go out. Unexhausted. I have got better as well, six times married. And divorced. No problem. In America, not a big deal. And how many actually follow from the very beginning and are still following? Crisis arrives almost for everybody. Crisis times is always there. The question is how much and how is this dealt with? Spiritual life is like that. There's crisis and my attacks. You test it, mind is testing. You know, even you can be very successful, <coughs> especially if you're not successful then uh, Maya will test. So, so the crisis is always there. The question is what you do with that, how you act in that. So the sincere devotee, they always stick more to the spiritual master's association, to the instruction. Not the spiritual master, even being not able maybe all the time to follow it. So that's called weakness. Weakness might be there, but then it becomes like a Hypocrisy, that you declare the weakness of being actually the new point, a real strong point, preaching on the PowerPoint. Just the word PowerPoint, where is this coming from? Do you hear in Prabhupada's books? Now Krishna made a PowerPoint. All this vocabulary comes up. It's all better by the shame and fear to simply call Prabhupada. We have to rephrase it so people like it, because now they don't like it. Yeah, but we don't see much result coming out of that. All these terms of, you know, bridge preaching here and this preaching there, and why do we phrase things? Just keep it simple. 
People come because of happy devotees. People come because the prasadam tastes good. People come mainly because they see somebody has a real fun here. And did you ever saw some fun coming from these bombastic programs? I didn't. All this tortured atmosphere of studying something which is very, very, very over the capacity of my brain. You know, it's like you put, it reminds me a little bit of my daughter when she was growing up. When she was a very, very small girl, she got her first Barbie puppets. You know, girls, they like to dress puppets, because they see themselves like a puppet. So they just, you know, and then she got this idea when she was small that all these little shoes and this little dress for the puppet, she would like to wear it also. So I found her, you know, trying to put these little puppet shoes on her own feet. And she was really frustrated because it didn't fit. You know, so this is what we are doing in the name of preaching. You know, we, we try to get either shoes which are too big or too small, whatever, in, you know, so discriminate preaching means discriminate way that you just engage persons according to their condition and quality like that. And then they get happy and then they get happy and surrender, they get more empowered. They can do more foul things. Yes, they will do great things, but you don't put a great thing, you know. Like we see today in, uh, in Europe, you don't know this about us are sitting here in this small Denmark, but that's good. Just, just keep it simple. But you know, we have this big temple standing around from the days where each temple had like 350 devotees, you know, minimum. You know, I can give you the names, the addresses, you know. Now in a place which used to have a 350 devotees, now there are 8 devotees or 5 devotees. Sometimes there are more devotees in our times, devotees in the temple. So you know, so struggle. How do you maintain such a facility? So it is a little bit like, you know, you inherited some wardrobe from some really big man, you know, huge outfits and everything. But you are a little skinny man. And now we try to fit the skinny man into the big wardrobe outfits. Well, it looks a little bit funny. It's not going to... Just imagine you get pants. Like, you, you get pants from me, okay? Probably you will just disappear in them. And then when you make a step, you will step on the pants and fall over. For me, it's okay. I have no problem. But you will have a problem. Because you are half the size of me. You know? So similarly, you take some concept and you put it on this sugar type people, you know, this is Krishna consciousness, great, and they try to dress in it and they get completely lost and they fall over and you make their devotion part two or whatever. And you know, and then you create either people who are very proud, arrogant, or they just become sadhya. Sadhya means you, you imitate something without following the principle. Therefore, you can see how Prabhupada makes a uh, you know, very clear point here. You should preach by example. That's the most powerful preaching. Not creating some mental, actually good identity. You are not creating it. You took it from the scriptures. It doesn't fit you. We have it right away in the Bhagavad Gita. Arjuna is trying to be sannyasi. Krishna is just laughing. He said, you, sannyasi? Where did this idea came from? And we know Arjuna tried twice. First time he got a new wife, and second time he almost killed everybody everywhere, destroyed the whole forest while fighting with Lord Shiva. So much for the sannyas. You cannot suppress the nature of man like this out of question. So do you know a program? You purify it. So once you be on guard, don't try to be somebody else, both materially and spiritually. Let it go and act according to your own means. Prabhupada even so far said it's going to be simple for the simple ones. And it's going to be very complicated for the complicated ones. So yes, if you want to have a very complicated Krishna consciousness, then get yourself some idea what you are and try to live up to it. What about if it doesn't work? And of course we need help. We need help from outside. Because our whole childhood and our whole existence was built on illusion. 
They told us what we should be, or we thought we are like that. You know, everybody has tons of ideas, especially with this completely false so-called academic education. People are misshaped right away from the early days. You are this, and you are that, and now I am like that, and I have to dress like this, and I have to act like that. But it's all just one big show. It's like theater, you know? Yeah. In theater, the stage was open, and there's a whole thing happening. There's a good guy, bad guy, there's a love story going on. But I remember how disillusioned I was, you know, when, when I was. I grew up in such a scenery, you know, when I was going behind the stage and then you see the back of the forest is just a bunch of, you know, wood planks, you know, and the actors are just smoking and drinking and, and the princess, you know, ah, on a stage, such a gentle princess in the backyard, she's just cursing everybody every way, you know, you know, and they are all low class people, drunk and, you <laughs> I was very disillusioned. I remember once I was in a film studio. I was a very small boy, but I never forgot that scene. It was, it was like a big factory hall, you know, film studios is just one big empty room, and then they make everything on the little room. Very quickly. One day is the forest there, the next day is the living room, the next day is some cave, or whatever you want. They can build any illusion you can imagine. So, it was the bedroom, you know, love story. And I was still a small boy and I was thinking, this is strange. You know, it was, it, first of all, it was a big hall, and then the hall was just two walls together like this. Because they built only that what is needed for the camera to catch. There was no room really, it was just two walls and there was a bed. And it was nicely decorated with curtains and window and there was a light from behind. It looked like countryside, but actually it was, it was inside in a dark, you know, stage. And then, on the big hall, you have a balcony going around where all the lightning is there, you know. There's these guys, you know, with these big halogen things and big. So there was this old fashioned, really huge lights, you know, it's hot like hell. And they make the lightning, you know, so there's no crazy shadows going in people's faces. And it's usually over lighted, it's bright. Actually, on a film, it appears like some intimate scene in a bedroom, but actually, it's bright illuminated like in an airport. And then, <coughs> and then you have the actors on the bed, you know, and he goes, I love you. You know. But there's at least 60 people out there with you know with lights, you know, and like and one is chewing on some lunch bag, you know, just some bread, you know. <laughs> you know, and then there's a director and there's a cameraman, there's a sound, there's a big sticks coming out with the mics hanging over the head, just close. So the camera doesn't catch it. Sometimes in the movies they make a mistake in a cutting room at the end and they shape the whole movie up. They forget actually that sometimes you see, you know, in the action, you know, there's an action and this and suddenly there's a microphone hanging you know, from the sky. Well, that was the guy with the mic, he went too low with the microphone, you know, and things like this. And it's completely illusory, the whole thing. But it's a very intimate love scene, you know. And then the director goes, cut! That means the recording is finished. And then he starts to talk and ha ah, and you know, and you know, and then the chief, the leading lady, you know, looks at the leading man, her lover, you know, and she goes, This guy stinks, you know, he should wash himself next time, yeah. It's too much. You know, he didn't brush his teeth. You know, and then he goes, Oh sorry, I have to go, and then he has to go brush his teeth and then make another try for the same scene. And it's completely out of, you know, but in a Film people say, oh no, now they cry, oh he loves them, oh. this is material world. It's all external, it's all one big mind theatre performance. Now they are existentialistic people, they, they know that, they guess that, but they have nothing to offer. They just go, we are like anything. <laughs> Prabhupada said, okay, then why are you trying to expect it to enjoy the dream? If it's just a dream, then give it up. Wake up! We are telling you, just wake up. If it's just a dream, then wake up! No, 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 I will not wake up. Therefore, it's difficult to preach. That's what Prabhupada called the rascal. So, rascal is the one not who is not waking up. The rascal is the one who is pretending he's sleeping. He is wake up. He knows what he has to say. 
He knows he should try to start to cultivate some spiritual life, but he will not do it. He pretends to sleep. It's very difficult to wake somebody who pretends to sleep. You go, wake up, and he goes, Pff. He knows you are there. But if somebody really sleeps, quite easy to wake him up. He will wake up, and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. But most people are pretenders. And that makes the preaching so difficult. And this is what Prabhupada writes here, you should not be that in the name of spiritual life. Yeah? Like all, you mentioned earlier, all these uh, material desires like Maya, she attacks. Yeah. So if one just tolerates, yes. does it like cool down? And of course. It's all temporary. The desires will not stay. Or will it just cool down and uh, then... They come and go. Oh, okay. It's like a... It's like, you know... It's like a guitar, you know. I'll give a simple example. Guitar doesn't play on its own. It plays only when you hit the string, you know, and then mm, vibrates. So by circumstances we touch the guitar of our material desires and the sound comes. <sighs> Vibration, you go, wow, 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 I would like to do this. Oh, I have to check this out. Oh. But it's just the, the vibration of the desire. And then after a while, it just stops. It doesn't vibrate anymore. But the whole process of Krishna consciousness being so busy in Krishna consciousness that even you accidentally touch this and that some material design starts to vibrate, you tolerate, you have no time to take care of this. I have no time. The perfect example is Haridas Thakur. That's for it's so clearly illustrated. This prostitute, a beautiful prostitute, can be seduced. He knew, he knew that. So he could just say right away, hey, just get out of here. I'm chanting here non-stop my rounds, you know. I have no time. This is so pathetic. This is insulting. Get out. No, he didn't do that. He was such an amazing devotee. Such a, you know, self-situated devotee that he said, yes, this girl was sent to seduce me. There's a plot going on here. But uh, why shouldn't she make some spiritual advancement as well? After all, she came to me. So he was going, yes, Mataji, uh, sex? You should have sex. Yeah, why not? But um, I have no time right now. But if you wait, I finish my rounds, then we can have sex. The only problem was he never finished his rounds. <laughs> and the prostitute was sitting there just waiting. Is he going to be finished? You know? And he was never finished. <laughs> so after a while she got so annoyed, she just left. And then she came again. And he was going, oh, very nice, you came. Unfortunately, I'm not finished yet, you know. But just sit down and, you know. And after two, three days of this, she became so purified by his chanting. She realized, what am I doing here? I'm trying to seduce such a saint. So she surrendered to him. Then he opened up. And he said, you see, that's very nice. So now please chant Hare Krishna, worship to Vasi, and I know why you came. The local Zaminda doesn't want me to be here, he is envious. So I will go on my own, don't worry, I'm leaving. You will achieve, your mission was successful, and uh, please stay here instead and worship to Vasi and chant Hare Krishna. Then she said, but who, how will I survive? Because I maintain myself by prostitution so far. And he said, don't worry, Krishna will take care of it. So then she shaved up and she was chanting the little lesson and it got known that a prostitute became, you know, a disciple of Haridas Thakur and she's sitting there now completely absorbed in holy name. So people came from all sides, you know, worshipping her and bringing some, always bringing some donation, some boga and something and she had such a luxurious life and she did pie and she became like the local guru. You know, so she realized how it works. This is a very illustrative story. So how to treat Maya? Just be happy. Therefore we have to be always anxious to keep ourselves engaged in our Thinking and the mind is anytime ready to back out of this. Hey, what about this? What about that? 
Ja, 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 that's okay, that's the mind. Ja, 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 ja. You know, some people want to take sannyas in the morning and get married in the evening and, you know, when they wake up next day they think, uh, actually, I'm about who done, I'll do nothing of this. And, you know, and uh, you can, the mind can tell you anything. The mind can tell you anything. Therefore, we need a spiritual master. We need supervision. So just in case we start to believe what our mind is telling us, we have to ask. It's like I remember when Goldberg and he said, Prabhupada, I would really like to uh, take sanyas, but I am so full of lust, I cannot take sanyas. And Prabhupada said, so what are you going to do about the lust? And he said, I guess I should take sanyas. Prabhupada said, good, I'm take sanyas. <laughs> 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 When you get old, it's difficult to get surprised. <laughs> Every story I'm telling you, there's a name to it. <laughs> but what's the use to go on the names? Important is the principle. <laughs> like we read these letters from Shiva Prabhupada, we don't know the names. This person, we don't know what they are doing today. We don't know. But the principle behind it. Prabhupada is establishing, that's important. That's always relevant. People come and go, but the principles stay. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking, I, I talked to Lalitza Prabhu today um, about one thing from Third Cancer, which I was hoping you could elaborate on. Kapila Muni, he talks about like devotional service being transcendental. So he talks about the nature of the service being transcendental mixed with the performer of the service not being transcendental, which results in devotional service and goodness, passion and ignorance. You're right. Could you talk a little about that? Good karma, Mishra Bhakti. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's the qualification of the follower. Yeah. The original, you know, 
as a service is pure, transcendental. But we are not transcendental. So we mixed, according to the level of our material desires and material conditioning, we uh, try to uh, adopt, adapt some self to devotional service, which is good. Which is good. And then by doing so, one becomes more and more tolerant towards one's conditioning and transcends it gradually. Gradual. Because the devotional service is more of ignorance, that's difficult because you really don't know what you are doing. It's called Agyata Sukriti. <laughs> you just, you know, like a devotee's book falls on the floor on some get down and Kami comes and pick it up and give it to him. Hey, so you dropped something. Oh, oh. That's service. It's actually a transcendental service, but he doesn't know one thing what he's doing. So he will not come back and be eager. How can I pick up more books and how can I go and sound guitar? And, you know, and, and because he doesn't know. He just did it accidentally. So, you know, so, uh, so this is, but it's beneficial. Let's record it. Devotion and model of passion. Devotion and service and model of passion. You expect something from it. There has to be some, something you have to get from it. At least name, fame, you know, something. Even spiritual ecstasy? Huh? Even spiritual ecstasy and satisfaction in bliss? It is like that. You should not expect that. When it's given, fine. If it's not given, we serve anyway. So for this devotional service in the mode of passion and, and ignorance can be broken, can be stopped. Because the performer is simply too conditioned. He doesn't get what he wants and he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> so then it can be stopped. But then you come to mode of goodness that's almost transcendental because then you are powered by good. Ecstasy, not ecstasy, happiness, not happiness, it's my duty to do. There you can be already quite situated. There's only one problem. By doing this, uh, you experience a certain happiness, which you may sometimes mistake in and think this is transcendental and you get proud. It's a problem with modern goodness people. They get so puffed up. I'm so pure. Look, I'm just continuing devotion of service of steadily. My sadhana, perfect. They get puffed up. Well, that's not the result of Saddam that you get more and more puffed up. Or austerity. That's still materially conceived. Look, my head is so shaved and I put it here and it's shiny and my tilak is just so perfect. And I have tilak everywhere and kavacha here and I have this 60 neck beads and I have a browning skin. It's like a road from a truck. You know, <laughs> I'm just going out. <laughs> I know mantras, you don't know. I know so many mantras, I don't know so many shlokas. I mean, I must be, I am the, actually, I, I, I just Nimbakacharya and me, you know? Or maybe I started the new something. Like, oh, there's four of them, but I'm the fifth one. By that time, you're already finished. Krishna Kohl, thank you very much for the performance, but a wrong turn. <laughs> Krishna has a special place now to perform Krishna consciousness and he goes, and now we achieve the result. There is a door to Vaikuntha. And you go, see, see, Krishna is sending me to Vaikuntha. I'm so great. You open the door and there's a toilet. A special Brahmana toilet. Where all the other Brahmanas already sit. With the Brahman strings and all. And they go, I am the follower of Lord Krishna. My stool smells after roses. I know what I'm talking. Boy, that one is a rose, you know. It's especially dangerous 